May the Gentiles, by the good works which they shall behold in you, glorify God in the day of his visitation. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. In the epistle of today, St. Peter exhorts us. He tells us in no uncertain terms to live out our Catholicism, to conform the way that we live to the reality of what we believe, to the reality that we as Catholics are called to walk in the footsteps of our Lord Jesus Christ. St. Peter instructs us to remember that we are only pilgrims here below, that our happiness is not to be found on this earth, and therefore we should refrain ourselves from all carnal desires, that we should be obedient to the authorities God has placed over us, that we should speak at all times words becoming of a Catholic, and that as followers of our Lord Jesus Christ, we should honor and we should respect and love all men. And if we were to go home and take out our New Testament and read the other four chapters of this epistle, we would find repeated time and time again this same theme. Glorify God and help or influence others to glorify God by living externally the Catholic faith by the manner in which you conduct yourself both publicly and privately, and by the actions and the deeds you perform. Now certainly, one reason why St. Peter emphasizes this idea of living externally or outwardly the realities of our faith is because St. Peter knew very well, as St. Francis knew, when he would simply walk through a town dressed in his habit in order to preach a silent sermon, that not only do our external good actions benefit us by giving glory to Almighty God, but additionally God can and he does use our good works to bring grace not only to our own souls but to touch the souls of our neighbor as well. Many years ago, a parish was hosting an organized breakfast after Mass in the town of Tokyo in the country of Japan, and they had invited a special guest to speak about his conversion, a brigadier general. And he told that his conversion came about through the exemplary courage, through the example of a young corporal with whom he had served in France during the First World War. He said, I can't even recall his name now. And with a little emotion, he said, but wherever he is, may God bless him. Every night, You see, regardless of whether he was being taunted or ridiculed or there were objects aimed at him or the tricks we played upon him, even once someone stuck an icicle down his back, that Catholic corporal knelt down alongside his blanket and prayed his night prayers. And at the conclusion of this speech, many men and women came up to congratulate the general on his conversion and on his speech. And one such middle-aged man caught his attention. He nervously came forward. He shook the general's hand. And he said, You're sure, general, that you weren't the sergeant who stuck the big icicle down my back that cold winter night of 1917. 
It is true we are not to be showy or looking for human recognition in the good works we do in publicly living our faith. We recall the words our Lord tells us. He tells us to fast and to pray and to give alms in secret so that your heavenly Father who sees these things in secret will reward you. But this... These words of our Lord do not constitute an absolute prohibition against our good examples being seen by other men. In another place, our Lord makes this clear. Let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. You are the light of the world. A city seated on a mountain cannot be hid. The faults to be avoided then in giving a good public Catholic example to others is not to take pride in it. For instance, by attributing that good action to our own efforts or performing that good action only because we hope to get from it human praise or to be seen by other men. But a visible manifestation of our faith, an outward showing of our faith by some good work, is not simply bad because other people are going to see it. Often, though, the reality is that many of our public performances, giving witness to our faith, is connected to the fact that we will be seen or even praised by others. And contrary-wise, we are inclined quite often to omit a good action because we fear that by performing it, it will bring ridicule or unwanted attention or a false sense of shame upon ourselves. How easy it is, for instance, to make the sign of the cross and to be seen to pray in the church when we are surrounded by those who believe the same thing as us, who profess and hold to the same creed. Yet how difficult it is to make that exact same sign of the cross and to pray when we are seated in public at a restaurant. How easy it is to kneel down and pray one's night prayers in the presence of our family, when we go to another's home, do we not find it difficult to kneel down in their presence and recite those well-known prayers as we are always accustomed to do before we go to bed? Or take, for instance, the simple wearing of the scapular. It's easy to do when we are among fellow Catholics. If it pops out from underneath our shirt, No worries. We don't even give it a second thought. But when it happens while playing sports among non-Catholics, we suddenly find ourselves scrambling to tuck it back beneath our shirt, hoping that no one noticed it. And if they did, heaven forbid that they ask us what it is or why we're wearing it. Yet it is exactly at those moments, in those uncomfortable settings, in those apparently hostile public environments that we have the greatest opportunity to give witness to our faith. And remember that the word martyr means witness. And to be a witness, to be a martyr means to suffer. It means to die. It always involves some sort of sacrifice. And in these situations in our lives, it's going to require the sacrifice of our human respect. And it is exactly because of that reason that that action, that good work, can have a disproportionate effect on those around us who witness it. Because in those moments, God is absolutely free to use us as an instrument to touch their souls because that action has no self-love in it. It will not become a source of pride for us. 
And this is why we need to strive, especially to be today, to be unashamedly Catholic, to be unapologetically Catholic. In those awkward moments, in those public moments, when we are weak, God can make his strength felt. He can manifest his power. In those moments, God can and will use our weakness. He will use our sweating and trembling hand in making that public sign of the cross. He will use our fear in ordering that mac and cheese instead of that bacon and chicken or bacon and turkey sandwich on a Friday at the public restaurant. He will use our reluctance in pulling out our rosary while we're riding on public transit, or our manner of dressing, or her to use our awkward silence at the hearing or the telling, the hearing of a telling of a bad joke. He'll use those weaknesses to touch and strengthen those whose souls are witnessing us do these things to be touched by his grace. Never, we should never underestimate the good God can work from a simple, courageous, faith-filled act when it comes at the cost of our human respect. There was once a young man who was working at a textile factory. He was a good Catholic among many non-Catholics. And when it came to lunch every Friday, he would unpack his lunch and he'd have his fish sandwich or his egg sandwich or his cheese sandwich. And the non-Catholics would gather around and in good nature joking, they would poke fun at him and dangle their meat sandwiches before his eyes. But as is often the case with even good nature joking, sometimes it becomes a little more serious, or one in the group is a little more serious and mean about what they say. And this was the case with one of his co-workers. Year later, years later, this man, this Catholic, he found himself walking outside of a church, and who did he meet coming out of the church but this old acquaintance? the one who had been more mean towards him at the factory years before. And they began to strike up a conversation, having recognized each other, and they began to speak of the times in the past when they worked together. And finally, this man, he said to the Catholic, you know, I want to tell you something. It was your example that aroused my interest of Catholicism. I thought, if a man can take the taunts of a crowd and still remain proud of his faith, there must be something wonderful about that faith. You see how I am dressed today, and he was dressed in the garb wearing the priestly cassock. He said, Today I celebrated my first Mass. My dear faithful, let us not be afraid to humbly live out our faith publicly. Perhaps, and I think we can say it's more than just a perhaps, the eternal welfare of other souls depends upon us giving a good example. I leave you then with these words spoken over a century ago by a Pope whom we all hold very dear, St. Pius X, in a discourse he once gave. He says, let us not exaggerate the difficulties of practicing what our faith imposes on us to exercise the fruitful apostolate of giving a good example, which the Lord expects of each of us. 
Difficulties come from those who trust in themselves without the help of heaven, from those who give in, vilely fearful of the mocking and the derision of the world. It must be concluded that in our days, more than ever, the main strength of evil men is the cowardice and the weakness of those who are good. All the backbone of the kingdom of Satan lies in the weakness of Christians. Let us then, at today's Mass, at today's Mass, ask Almighty God then for this strength to be a good example to those around us, and that our good example may not become for us a source of pride, but may it be used solely by God as an instrument of grace to touch those souls we will come in contact with. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen.